What's up, everybody, and welcome to Hot Makes. I'm just kidding. I just have the show on today. <laughs> oh, what's uh, what's going on, everybody? I hope there's some rants in the in the show notes this week. Oh, oh man. rants. There, there might be some. I, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe. Wait, is my are the uploaded files only per computer? Can I not see the the like the uploads, I just was going to look for the Tim rants, and uh, it's not the uploads. Luckily, I have it on my computer, and we have the Tim rants clip ready to go. Uh, there might be, there might be some, there might be some rants. Um, A so, bit. yeah, uh, we do have some stuff in here. Um, oh, toward the, uh, you mean you fix the post, uh, the the metal and the filament. Uh, one, it just says, oops, something went wrong. Please try again later for the, uh, oh, wait, disregard that. It's, Nothing it's showing correctly. I just, I just yeah, it's, it's on my end. Back end and the front end. Yeah. We don't have anything for the company updates though, but we, we don't, we don't really need them right now. We can add those in later because we know what's going on in our company. Um, we just got a bunch of flex plates in, um, almost every sock. Ooh, excuse me. Almost every size is in stock. Um, we have 235 by 235s again, and we have 235 by 235s with little notches for like the K1 and the under 3 V3 SE and the KE. Now you can use the ones with the notches on printers without the little alignment screws. And you can also use the ones without the notches on the beds with alignment screws. You just take the alignment screws off. But we do have the two different variants. Um, we did get the K1 Max plates in, so the 310 by 315s with the notches in the back. Um, those are in stock. We also have 310 by 310s and 310 by 320s. Um, we also have the bamboo plates in stock for the A1, P1, and X1 series. Um, A1 being the, the fire starter one, not the miniature one. Um, and uh, what other size? Oh, the 377 by 370s, uh, the which are the Ender 5 Plus size. And then we also have the 410 by 410s. 410. Now, yeah, the ones that we're, we're waiting on um, are the 508 by 508s, the 290 by 290s, and the 470 by 470s. Um, oh, and also, if you guys have an SV01 or SV01 Pro, we do have the 300 by 255s that the SV01 and the SV01 Pro have uh, use. And all the plates are eligible for bulk discounts. So if you're running a print farm or you're just obsessed with printing like we are and have a bunch of printers, um, you can save some money. Uh, basically, there's a price break after three. Um, so like, for example, the bamboo flex plates, uh, we'll just use those as a good example because um, I have it open right now. 
Um, for example, the bamboo flex plates, if you, so if, uh, zero to three quantity is thirty five ninety nine, and then it starts dropping down and you get a higher discount per plate based on what you order. So, um, yeah, if you guys are looking for good deals and this is on any of the plates, they are, they have the bulk discount. So if we go to flex plates and magnets here, uh, we do have each one with a separate listing now. Um, so if you like know your plate size, you can just do like 310 by 310 and, our search engine if you type it correctly 310 yeah if i type it correctly mm -hmm. um and unlike other supplier uh, other sellers uh these are actual pictures of the plates these are not renders um these are actual photos of the plates that i took myself um and the actual photo of up close of the um of the surface so these are the pictures of the actual plates it's not like some amazon special rendering um where it just kind of looks like roughly what you're going to get. I like to show off our products. I'm very proud of them. Um, and now I'm just happy that I have plates now for printers because I was running really old plates on my Ender 5 Plus. Now I have 5 Plus plates again. Um, well, I'm still running the old S4 plates, like the original that were really thin. I wore the textured coating off our old gold ones. Easy Flex 2, the, the, the coating's almost gone in the center. I printed so much on there. <laughs> so yeah i, I it's, you, it's been Anderson. overdue oh there we go um oh and it went to tripod nice it went to tripod ah oh, it's rigged it's rigged um all right now we did put a link to the show notes in the bottom here i thought i saved did you something happened here because i put the youtube link and the rumble link in the in the your your version must overrode my version because i put the stream links in there Oh, I did not see any stream links when I reloaded it earlier. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, company updates. Uh, we're one week away from Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest. Who's all going? I want to see who's going. Tor, uh, many of you guys may not know, but Tor is the longest standing uh, employee here. Like he was my first hire, like literally my first hire before anybody else, even before, uh, you know, my ex that used to work for me, like. Yeah, I, I outlasted his ex. You outlasted, every, yeah. You're 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 <laughs> the final, you're the final one of the OG. <laughs> Tor Tor has been dealing with me for almost seven years now. <laughs> it hasn't <laughs> felt like seven years though. <laughs> oh, you're so kind. You're so kind. You would you you wouldn't say that it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Um, just as a little Easter egg, there is, if you guys are checking out on the site, if you enter the code, it's bad. You'll get 6.9% off your TH3D order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am dead serious because, you know, I've had a bad week, so it, it's been a bad week. So let's make the week less bad by giving you a little discount. How's that? Um, it's just a coincidence that I chose a discount code. I just thought it was, you know, it works. But yeah, so if you use the code, it's bad. You'll get 6.9% off. Nice. At checkout. Um, all right. I'm trying to think of what other... Uh, oh, filament. Um, I'm just going to mention those like a week ago. Many people may not know, but we have a ton of filament in again. Um, I'm pretty sure every one of the TH3D really filaments except for the the ASA carbon fiber is restocked. The reason the ASA carbon fiber isn't restocked is because it's still being made. We had a custom batch of filament made, so we'll be one of the few people that has ASA carbon fiber filament. So I'm excited for it. Yeah. No, it'll be it'll be good. And if you're wondering why my 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 screen, my camera's shaking a little bit, it it's this this damn thing right here is printing. So, and my monitor's on a mount, so. The K1. I'm excited for the S8 Pro. I'm going to be ordering one. Oh, well, this is, this, this was printed with uh, the Polymaker, um, uh, 3D Print General's Polymaker filament. It's a little wine bottle holder that we got from STL Fix because we got a membership there. Um, so I did this. We got some shows coming up, some prints and stuff like that because basic bitches love wine, Okay. And then I did this in Loyal Moses's green. So we got a couple of these, but these came off of the K1. And I sliced this at 120 millimeters a second. Came out really good. Um, and I am running the uh, the Triangle Lab Hot End in my K1. And we still have some of those left for 30 bucks if you guys are wanting to um, 
wanting to get a nice upgrade for your K1 or K1 Max. I don't know if it fits the K1C. I don't know if they changed that hot end design, uh, but it for sure fits the K1, K1 Max. That's what I'm running in here. Um, and it's really great. It heats up quick and the flow rate's really damn good. Um, all right. So in terms of, um, I, I, I pulled an Elon Musk uh, multiple times over the last 24 hours uh, and told Trustpilot to go after themselves multiple times. Um, and they're, they're, uh, we're, we're not gonna spend too much time on this, but we're gonna do a mini rant, okay? So, trust pilot, this one's for you. You freaking bricks! What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! So, moving into the, the Tim, Tim's rant, uh, for, for this week, uh, is Trustpilot. If you guys don't know who Trustpilot is, they are this scummy review site that looks at first glance, like it's pretty good. And I'm not saying everything on there should be discounted. However, I do want people to understand what these pieces of shit, because they are pieces of shit. There's going to be swearing. So if just a fair warning, um, if you have children that don't, are not used to hearing swear words, you should probably, probably maybe caution them to leave the room right now, but they're literally extorting businesses, um, including us to try to get us to pay them $250 a month minimum for one of their plans. Now you may ask what do you get with their plans and how are they extorting this? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go through this. So with their plans, you get to put little widgets on your site that show like your trust rating and, uh, reviews and it, it, they'll send customers reviews and stuff to ask them to leave a review. Um, and also when you're a paid customer, you also have an account representative that can manage reviews that are unwanted. Now by manage, I mean, they won't straight up tell you that they'll remove the negative reviews, but you're much more likely to get them taken down if you pay them. That's what I that's that's what I got from talking to them on the phone a couple of times. I talked to them a couple of months ago when they were trying to upsell us on this. So what started all this is we had our own customer reviews on our website as excerpts, and then I linked out to the trust pilot page. Now I do have a link and I'm gonna post this in here if you guys want to see all the details here. Um, you guys know I'm very transparent, uh, probably too much in some cases, but I'd rather err on the side of oversharing than being secretive. Um so this is this and this is a, a recurring thing here. Um, the issue is that they're trying to say that we can't even have screenshots of the printer mods people's page on our Facebook page. So this was like our first contact with them where they started getting shitty with us um, was on March 25th. OK, but. We're allowed to then use this stuff and what they call their widgets if we pay them for a plan. Okay. So they're trying to get us to sign up for this plan. So, bottom line is if you're a small business and you have Trust Pilot breathing down your neck, go tell them to go fuck themselves like I did. Um, this all started with them emailing us. And here's the email um, We detected your current use of our brand goes against our guidelines. More specifically, you are showcasing Trustpilot reviews on the website and Facebook account. While well, it's not included with your plan, I just realized it got cut off, but that's what it is. Um, what do I need to do? They said, please only use the ones that are use the widgets that are available in your showcase section uh, for, for, for more information to see how to use Trustpilot brand correctly. Visit our brand hub or brand guidelines. Um, so here, if you continue, if we continue to detect trust by brand misuse on THRSTU.com, you'll receive a warning. We'd rather avoid that. So we'd be grateful for your cooperation in resolving this issue. Comment, go lay down. Um, so this is what they sent us. So there's, I'm sorry, these got cut off. I didn't realize it. I'm not even going to up re-upload them because it's, it's just, but anyways, you can see here, we had like our, some of our reviews on here. Hey, look, there's Emerson's, um, and these link to the trust pilot reviews. So you can see that they were real. Um, and then you can see here more of them. So you can see they screenshotted all of this and they had a problem with it. So I removed them. I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll remove them. And I put our product, uh, reviews block in there. Um, and then even after I removed all this from our website, they're still bitching about the screenshots on Trustpilot. So we now have a warning here on our site and I'll actually go to it right now. So I can show you I'm, I'm I'm not bullshitting you guys. 
Um, one up right now, share this tab. Right here, they have this banner at the top of our page that basically is trying to mislead customers to say that we're like misleading our customers by falsely displaying our, our rating. Now, we're not a shitty company like OnePlus that has like a 1.2 star. We, we have 4.7 stars on here because we actually take care of our customers. Here, this one star, this guy was an idiot. He had support and then he one starred us because he thought he didn't have support. Morons. Um, but anyways, we have we have really, really good reviews on Okay. They're basically trying to interfere with their business. And this is why I told them to go fuck themselves because this is insane. So the reason they put that warning on here is because we would not remove the screenshots of printer mods trust pilot page showing that they were horrible. Not I even, even went out of own, my way. Yeah, not even our own reviews. It's not even our own, own reviews. No other company's reviews. So these, I even went out of my way to edit and like put like little crappy stars over their thing. I also like blurred out Trustpilot. I put a thing here with just obvious crappy text thrown on here really quick. This is from Trustpilot. We had to blur and remove content from screenshots because Trustpilot was threatening our business for these screenshots. This was not enough for them. They still are going after us. And this is the email I got yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Um, from Marina who's a content integrity team person um, that says we made it clear that you can only use the trust box widgets, trust box widgets that are available on your trust pilot business account and all content must be used in accordance with our blah, 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 blah. Okay. We repeat, we repeat our request that you remove the unauthorized content from your site. And then the thing that pissed me off here is if you continue Using Trustpilot content in this matter, we will have no choice but to escalate this matter and take stronger action against you. We'd ra much rather avoid that and looking forward to working with you to resolve this in a constructive way. So here's the thing. I actually I actually talked to a couple friends that are lawyers, and Trustpilot is not based in the U.S., so going after them legally and them going after us legally is going to be really difficult. So that's why instead I just opted to tell them to go fuck themselves because also to remove all our stuff from their site. Yeah, I, I have also requested them to remove our entire page, my bit, my trademark business name, my all of our, I just, just nuke the page and make it so you can never sign up for Trustpilot again. Now, for the record, I never even fucking signed up for a goddamn Trustpilot account. Some idiot left a review for our website address and it automatically made the account and started emailing us and made us a goddamn account. So the, the irony here is they're they're having a problem with us showing like screenshots of a public facing website on our public facing website because it's infringing on their brand. But when we go and tell them to remove our fucking logos and our trademark business name from their site, they tell us they won't do it. So just like you guys are telling me to go fuck myself, trust pilot, I'm telling you guys go fuck yourself. You will never see a dime from me and I'll make sure every business owner I know is Knows not to give this scummy ass company a single fucking dime. Look at it right here. Put this right at the end. Said it at the closing here. If you're using trust pilot, if you're trust pilot reading this, go fuck yourself. To everybody else, I want you to have a wonderful day and I hope you never give trust pilot a dime. If you want to leave us a review, please do it on our Google page here. And I also have here, this was uh, my, fu my fuck you to them. I found a plugin that allows us to have uh, allows us to have reviews on our site. So these are just not product reviews; these are reviews of our our general company, just like Trustpilot. And this is all hosted on our server here, and I don't have to pay a dime for it. And I imported all of our Trustpilot reviews last night, every single one of them. Even made sure the dates carried over, the star rating. I even imported some of the shitty ones. Um, so you can see here, like. I actually imported the only one I did import was the, the idiot that was bitching about having to pay for support when he didn't have to pay for his support because I'm sorry, your review shouldn't see the light of day because you're just an idiot. Um, but like, yeah, so I imported all of our reviews. Like, so this is according apparently against their their own guidelines and whatever whack jobbery they wanna they wanna say. But the other thing too, I want to point, I should have started with this or led with this is in their own goddamn terms of service, they say that they don't even own the reviews. It is owned by the, the customers. So 
I'm pretty sure every single person watching here has no problem with me taking the reviews that you guys left for my business and putting them on our website and sharing them with other customers. If you have a problem and you're on there, go ahead and email us and I'll gladly take them down. But I'm pretty sure no one's going to have a fucking problem with us taking our reviews that our customers left for us from Trustpod and, and putting copies of them on our website. But they even say that they own it, but they have a problem. They say that I can't take the reviews and put them elsewhere unless I pay them $250 a month. No, go, go Not fuck yourself. Not a fucking chance. Like, and then this, this link here, medium here, um, this guy here, he runs a website called shop rocket and he's going, he's, he did a really good deep dive and has the same kind of thing here. They advise us if we did not remove the logo, they would be forced to push a consumer alert on our profile. This same thing here. So his, his website or trust pilot page has a uh has a warning on it i don't know if uh let's see Does this go to theirs let's see so here's here's theirs and look at that they still have it on there uh but he mentions in the article that he'll wear that with a badge of honor and i i don't blame him uh here's the thing if if they do try to send me more i have other i actually have their emails in our ticket system going to spam now they're getting blocked they're on the block list just like they were would be just like we do with shitty customers um, put them on a block list. Um, so we don't even see the emails cause I'm, I'm done wasting my time with them, but I am going to make sure that people are aware that this company is a scummy company because at the end of the day, they would stop harassing us because that's what they're doing. They're harassing us. I have requested multiple times via email to tell them to remove our page, delete all our reviews, delete my account. And they say, well, you can delete your account, but your page will stay up. So they're, they're bitching about me having, not even having their logo. I had my, like, customer reviews linked on there they're bitching about having their content on there but yet they're infringing on my trademark i i don't want the page on there anymore so if they're not going to do it at this point i'm just going to give them the big middle finger and just yeah it's it's so stupid but yeah, I'm saying, yeah, fuck off. yeah if they ignore yeah i told my buddy if they if they like send us a letter or something in the mail i'm just going to photocopy my bare ass and send that as a response with nothing else and i will i will make sure to film that i will have crystal hold the scanner i got a multifunction scanner i'm going to photocopy my ass and i'm going to send him a picture of my ass and that's going to be it that will be my response i i i'm so done with these fucking people like yeah i would not I can't sit on the copy my ass will break that we we don't have a big copy we've got that small Household ones, you know, I've got an inkjet all on one. They'd be light enough to, you know, hold up to your, your bare butt and, you know, scan it real quick. So, um, <laughs> he's not wrong, <laughs> but oh my God, can like, like, just think about this for a second. Can you imagine if I started a company that its sole purpose was making pages for other companies and letting people post reviews about those companies. And then if a company uses anything from those pages, I then start threatening them unless they pay me money because then once I pay them money, they're going to go away. But just, just on principle, even if I think their platform is neat uh, before I knew all this, I'm, I'm not going to give them any money. Now they have completely burned that bridge with the way they went about it. They could have just left me the fuck alone, but they didn't. So yeah. All right, that concludes yeah, this. Printer mod still rank. has. Uh, well, they took down both the guides and the calculators, but they still have the input shaping guide that I did. Um, yeah, well, it's that's yeah. I I I sent a message again to Shopify, and I told them if they didn't remove them, my next call was going to be a lawyer, and they'll be getting a thing because I'm not going to keep filling out their fucking forms for the same URLs. They were the same exact URLs. I literally told them. Yeah, they just, your, your choices are to them remove them and put them back. I'm not wasting. I'm not wasting hours filing repeat takedowns i'm just gonna go and get a lawyer and have them deal with you guys because i'm i'm not i'm tired of wasting my time on stupid bullshit that's what this is stupid bullshit all right that ends this week's tim rant you freaking bricks what will you learn what will you learn that your actions have consequences every time that plays and it comes back you your the look on your face is just like <laughs> All right. Uh, now on to 3D printing news. Uh, Tor, you, you've been following this more closely. 
So do you want to do you want to talk about the uh, the Soval stuff here? So in I think it's the first layers recent video, he got access or he got permission to post his video first out of everyone. And he was oh, saying that's, that's... <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny that he gets to do that. I know, right? <laughs> um he was saying that Solvo was telling him that they're going to do $2 for every printer sale is going to be going to the Voron design group. And who, who gets that money though? Because it's an open source product. Like where's that money going? Good question. <laughs> uh, it's just like, I think it's like spread out between like some of the guys who do the development. Like the and yeah. Yeah. To, okay. Like pay for filament parts for new things and stuff like that, but yeah. they they're actually backing it up. They dropped a thousand dollars in their into Voron's account. Yep, and they actually Someone made said a post Nick, about it's it. going toward to buy neck beard oil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, it's good to see. Like, if you're, if they're, because if they're borrowing a lot, of, I mean, we do the same thing with like Marlin. Like, we give Scott, we send him a hundred bucks a month every month. We've been, I think, we've sent Scott probably close to four or five thousand dollars at this point since we started doing it. So, mm. yeah. Um, actually, I'm just I'm surprised you didn't retweet that. I'm retweeting. I think I, I just did, did it. I toted. I toted it. Or is it's it really good to see. Exit? It's really good to see that they're actually putting back into the community when they took yeah. very heavy inspiration. Yeah, yeah. No, I I'm gonna be buying. I'm gonna be buying one of these when it comes out. Um, it does As look solid. I. I'm not. And uh, what do you guys think? Tor had a good idea about um, doing a tandem stream where we will wait for both of us to get ours and then we'll do a stream where we're both building it. Should we have like a, a race to see you can build it faster? I'll probably build it faster. <laughs> I've, I've built four on before and this will be simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like a solid printer for the money. I know it's not going to be perfect, but for 600 bucks, you can't even build a, that's like half the cost of a Vorum. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, yeah, I saw, uh, I, yeah, I saw Nero, I saw, I saw Nero had some issues. His is supposedly a pre-release one. I I'm in his, uh, cause I'm still, I'm still, uh, supporting him on Patreon, Patreon after the fiasco. So I'm in his discord server. Um, and I got the inside scoop now, you know? Um, but yeah, no, um, here's the thing for 600 bucks. It, it's going to be yeah. hard to beat. His, um, one of his issues was the alignment of the uh, stepper, or not the stepper towers, the uh, belt towers in the back. What okay. that was, it was actually the pin that holds it wasn't even long enough to reach all the way to the bottom. So I wonder if so was, I wonder so if they like because it was actually being pulled on. I wonder if, if they, they put like corrected. the wrong one in. It looked like it, yeah. Um. Why yeah, the belt idler is on the AV motors. There we go. Restart. Why? Why is it that uh, like I press and hold the button on here and it it doesn't bring up a restart menu? It, like brings up assistant. I don't like. It's that. open source, so you can three D print better parts. You can, but a lot of those yeah. are injection molded single yes. piece parts. Well, so but they're people, not people are going to change them. People are going to make new ones. They made new ones for the SVO six. And the SVL6 Plus, yeah. it always happens, okay? Out of the box, it, it, so you're not going to be able to, even if it's open source, you're not going to be able to just print off yeah. day one new part. I mean, here, here's the thing. So we've got, uh, all right, so let me close that out. Um, that kind of rolls into the next thing, uh, as we're talking about, like, open source, is the, the K2 Plus with its multicolor, and this is running Clipper. So this, this is a is 350 I want, I want to buy that thing just for the uh, SVOA. Yeah, so it's a 350 cubed. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting. Like, I don't know. Do they have a link of it? Is, is this printing oh. a toolbox? Why do they? The goddamn renders and stuff they make. It's like, 
Let me put this impossible part that's never There's another one. <laughs> why is there is a toolbox on there because you have to fix it all the time? Like <laughs> Is a K2 even announced on here? Not on there. I know they did the video with uh Sam Right, with Mr. Sam. Um Yeah, I guess I guess it's not on there. Don't they have like a news section here somewhere? I thought they did. But it's going to be a clipper compatible MMU system. Yeah, and that's MFU. and that'll be interesting. Like multiple it'll be interesting system, because it's not then multiple material. Well, it'll be interesting because then you can take it and put it on other things. The other thing is though, is it going to because like the bamboo has the cutter in the hot end, right? I'm assuming this will have like a cutter in it. We'd have to it have to figure out something to implement that. But I guess you could actually do it because we've done multicolor on one head before, like years ago. Yeah, it's been around forever. Um, they just have to have an optimized uh, tip solution, tip forming. Right. Yeah. 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 Basically, like you could do it with G code is what I'm getting at. Um, mm. Because I've done that. I had uh, I took it down because people kept asking me like a billion questions on it. Um, I had a two into one set up on my A net A8 plus or A net A8. And uh, yeah, that was, that was something I did. And I did that without a cut or anything. S4. Yeah. So and I got to say it, they were a pain to set up and get tuned in perfectly. But if you got tuned in, they did print pretty well. It did work really well. Yeah. It was just getting that. And it was mostly the tool change scripts that you had to worry about. Um, that was a big thing was a tool change scripts. Um, once you got that dial in though, it was pretty simple. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the point I'm getting at is that we might see, we might see a point where we can get these AMS type systems. I'm just gonna call them AMS. That's everybody's, you know, it's like the Kleenex of multicolor, you know, everybody calls tissues Kleenex when, you know, Kleenex is a brand name. So AMS, is, you know what I mean? Um, it'll be interesting to see what can be adapted and it won't be that hard. So I've already seen things like the Voron Stealth Burner have its own modification to put in the Creality or the uh, bamboo filament cutter into it. So I don't yeah. think that's going to be very hard for others to implement it in like the SVO8 and pretty much any printer. You just have to print out the right tool head. Correct. I'm trying to sorry, I was trying to figure out my my Google thing is popping up. Uh, got distracted. Squirrel. Hmm. Um. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. Um. All right. The and next thing, though, reality is actually uh, they're not the only one doing a lot of multicolor. So we have the Creality K two K two plus. Uh, the Frozen Arco, and any cubic Ace. They I didn't hear about thing, any cubics. I saw only one thing on, I think it was their Instagram, where it was just like a sneak preview, uh, not even an actual photo, it was just a render. But it was just the any cubic Ace. So they're coming out with their own. So it's going to be the year of multicolor this year. Yeah, well, and the th the th the the thing with multicolor you have to get right is having a preset of slicer profile to run it, having it easy to color the object that you're slicing with, because if you don't have like, you can have the best hardware in the world, but if the software driving it sucks or is hard to use, it's going to be a failure. They're all you know just I mean? going to skin Orca slicer and Bruce slicer. Cause they have the, they have pretty I mean, solid ways to color. If it, and... if it works, you know, we're actually going to um, get away from all the, uh, Reskin twelve-year-old versions of Cura. I mean, they're going to have to be nice. Yeah. Um. But uh. All right. The next one is uh, hey, bamboo's dude. back in the news. Tor found oh, this one. Boy. Yeah, this was posted earlier this morning, I believe. This this is a wall of text. They are getting like, their use out of that, uh, whatever. The, 10 the bucks Twitter, month, yeah, the blue. <laughs> the I mean, blue. we didn't see any benefit from it, so I stopped doing it. Um, but yeah, like, uh, basically, over in the EU, because it's such a nanny state over there, uh, 
users are not really supposed to be messing with mains voltage, right? Like that's the, that, that was mm -hmm. the gist I got from this. Um, and they're going to have to basically send pictures, right? Like, Right here, we would like to explain and encourage users to take three key photos during their placement process of the aforementioned locations. This will give us the opportunity to assist in confirming the correct procedure for the entire placement process, thereby avoiding any unforeseen issues. I mean, that's not terrible, um, but they like, want to check your work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's funny. Lights makes a good point. I understand how people in the EU um, can build a Voron, but not so this repair. Yeah. Yeah. We're on to me is like, um, don't look at us. Don't don't bring us into this. This is their shit. You don't have to pretend that you're going to obey any laws. Neither of the two options offered to us were legal in the EU. As a buyer, I'm entitled to a working device. He is correct. Um yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, the uh the comments in here. Oh, what is with the bots on here? Oh, but yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, here's the thing. If if a person in the EU does the repair on their own, what can happen to the end user? Is it back on Bamboo then? Right. Hmm. They're like, going to have issues still. With I'm reading this through this while. here. It says based on the legal and profession the based on the professional legal opinion and comprehensive evaluations, we have the obligation to truthfully inform European users about the inspection requirements of the machine after repair due to the requirements of the EU EN 50678 standard. General procedure for verifying the effectiveness of protective measures of electrical equipment after repair. So they have a thing that like you dear God. What 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 is this? Let me let me Google this. Either the I'm guessing either the company needs to check it, which would be bamboo, or if they have like a licensed electrician come out, they have to be You think a licensed electrician is gonna know what the hell is they're looking at in a printer? Right. Like, yeah, that's going to positive, that's going to negative. We're good to go. Well, it's not positive negative, it's a line of neutral with AC, line neutral. sir. Actually, oh my thought. Actually, actually, my beard. Oh, my beard is coming in a little bit stronger down here now. After I said that, oh, it's, it's poking out. It's trying to grow back. Just, just in the neck region. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. Like the way it's phrased here. Inspection requirements of the machine after repair. So, what happens if a customer repairs? Like, I mean, I know over in like the UK and everything, they literally have people that go door to door knocking, like to make sure you pay your TV license and shit like that. I wish I was joking. Um, I don't know. This is weird. We're gonna have to. I, this is one of those things we keep an eye on it, and once things start rolling out, see if there's any weird, funky shit that happens, or if it just completely goes under the radar. Um, yeah, I think I saw one of the comments where it's like, I finally got shipping notification for theirs, but they're probably in the U.S. not. Yeah, their the stuff is their stuff is slowly eking out. Um, it's good to see they're actually doing stuff instead of us being like reality with their bedroom. I'm like, okay, well, we'll just make another version. Those with the printer, fuck you. They've been, they've uh they've been Creality has been doing better though, which I, I will they give them been. props. I have I have shit on them a fair amount. Um, but they have been getting better. Um. They don't really have a choice because they want to stay relevant, but yeah. Um. <laughs> They're catching up quick with everybody. <laughs> I was looking at our Twitter notifications. Oh, God. <laughs> I tagged him. Hang on, where's the Elon meme? Oh, hang on. I need to find the GIF. They, we need they to have to GIF. have it. It's not like on there. I'm going to have to he, find it. Hang on. Oh, my God. How can they not have it? It's fucking Elon's. Hang site. on. I sent it to their. I sent it to their. Uh, I sent it to their support rep in an email the other day. Um, here it is. I found it. Hang on. 
Let's see. Uh, save image. Upload. Looks like Loyal is liking his SVO8. Damn. How was that? As you can tell, I don't fucking care anymore. I don't care if it comes off as unprofessional. These guys deserve it. I, I don't care anymore. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. This is on our Twitter. So if you guys have Twitter or X or whatever, go ahead and let Trustpilot know what you guys think of their stupid ass bullshitting, make, bullying Make sure policies. you're on the right X account or right uh, X website. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. This is something someone sent me. Uh, this is why. People, I, I roll my eyes and I know people are super cheap asses when I see them printing with like IID Max or uh, here, GST 3D. And there was like one, I think Fremover is the other one. They're, they claim they're not, the the they're not the same they not the same company. They're not the same. They claim they're not the same company and maybe legal entity wise or not, but they all have the same shitty spools. They all make the same shitty film. This is why you don't want to be buying really cheap shitty filament um, because there's a reason it's cheap. This is a shard of metal in the filament. This would absolutely decimate most hot ends that this would go through. Like mm -hmm. how the hell does this get past QC? And this is a repeat issue. Now, unfortunately I went to go like click some of these photos, but like the guy doesn't know how to copy Facebook URLs. Um, But like, here's just some like basically like, they're really shitty filament. Um, I remember, I forgot who, what filament it was, but there was actual rat crap. In the it, was this, like it was this, it was, it was, it was under the GST 3D brand. Here, so this guy's saying, and this is not me saying, this is this guy, Ryan E3P, is saying, Fremover is also the same company. So avoid IID Max, GST 3D, and Fremover. If you look at their spools, you look at their sites, you look at their marketing style, they all seem to be the same people. Again, they're going to be like, well, we're not the same company. It's all, it seems to be you like all legal separation. You get your from the same supplier. Yeah. So... Yeah, here. IID Max page is full of this stuff. Never had metal, just major issue with blobs in the film and causing clogs. There was some other guy here, and both of you to assume any QC was done. Um, there was another one here. Um, is this it? Hang on. Oh, yeah, here. Look at this. Talk about tolerances. 2.62 and all the way down to point nine. Look at look at this fucking roll though. Jeez. I have printed some shitty filaments in my days. I have I've... never gotten filament this fucking shitty. Like, and this isn't even a Chinese filament company. They're they're supposedly out of like the U.S. and Argentina. Um, Apparently, uh, David Hefner has talked to them before. Well, well, you know, what? Told me they're not. Oh, okay, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say me personally. My personal opinion is I think it's bullshit because they know. But like, I, 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 I Max, GSC, 3D, and Firmover all have the same type of spools, and all have the same kind of shitty yeah. QC problems. They may um, not be the same company. But they may Are you be sure it's the CFO? It Someone saying the CFO responded back to me. He said IID Max. The CFO. Why is the CFO responding to customer fucking support emails? The CFO is the financial officer. Why the fuck is the CFO responding to fucking customer emails? That's not. That's not something a CFO does. Yeah. Uh, either way, I've seen, like, I printed, I bought some, I think it was GST. I bought a couple rolls, and, like, while they printed okay, and I didn't have, like, rat droppings or metal shavings in mind, the filament was so transparent after it was printed. Like, you can tell that they're cutting costs by using, like, minimal amounts of dye in it. Um, they're using probably really crappy PLA pellets. Like, the bottom line is, if you're not 
paying a decent price, like 20, like around $20 a kilo is where you should be for decent plastic. Like if you're paying less than $20 a kilo, they're cutting corners somewhere. Typically, like unless there's like a big sale or you're buying in bulk, you're to get decent quality filament from, from any brand, you should be around $20 a kilo. Um, you get what you pay for, but like, this is one of the reasons why we will not touch these brands. Like I could probably resell their stuff, but I'm not going to sell my customer shit. These guys, GST, Fremover, IED Max, they have no problem selling their customers garbage products. I've seen these, these, these particular brands pop up with these same kind of issues. And like, like uh, Tor said, even with rat shit in them um, or mouse shit, some sort of droppings um, repeatedly over the years. Like they're, yeah. they're not like they're, they're not getting better. You know, so uh, that's why Polymaker has been so successful as well because they have solid quality filament. And if anybody ever has an issue, like they post it online, like right, contact our custom customer support, and we'll send you out an overall. Yeah. So, all right, something fun now. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up with something fun, and then we're gonna move into the Q and A. So I'm gonna put. I always forget to put this up here. David Hefner um, posted uh, the message from the CFO. Where at? Uh, stream chat. Oh, Discord. Chat. Hang on, I'm going to Discord right live now. Stream. Um, let's see. The filament never gets metal inside of it. Okay. We have apps. GST used to have the same schools. We were partners. They were partners. We split up and became an end independent company. Uh, I don't know, man. Either way, splitting up didn't help the fact that there's. I still see a lot of posts from IID Max of customers getting shit rolls. How many? How many posts have? How many posts and like sport tickets have we had of our film and having quality issues? Tor. Uh, none that I can think of. Yeah, it's pretty sure because I don't sell my customers garbage. <laughs> like, we literally have had zero returns on any of our filament. We've had zero returns on Polymaker filament. We also had zero returns on Cox filament. So, yeah. All right. Uh, something, something fun is, uh, what, what was his name? John, I think you said? Uh, John's, I can't remember. It's I can't remember the last name, but proper printing. Dumb. Um, this man has way too much time on his hands in a very intense stare. Like, I feel like this guy, if he was born like 500 years ago, he'd probably be like pillaging villages. On You'd his say that, but his if you look at his posting history, he doesn't have a lot recently because this is taking up so much damn time. <laughs> um, Over the past couple of months, I developed a well, 3D printer that is unlike anything else. So my my thing is, it's cool looking, but what is the application for this? Yeah, now, he this uses is a, a heated bed. Purpose. Yeah, it's a griddle for the heated bed. Um, but um, my whole thing, though, I'm like, don't different. get me wrong, I'm all I'm all for like cool weird projects. Um, but. What is the point no, yes. of well, everything fits? Um, I think that this is a. Uh, what is the point of having the two independent gantries that IDEX doesn't do? Uh, I mean, this is this is a lot of work. Like, if you guys, I'll post the video is in like, the show notes. If you guys want to watch it, it is a cool watch. Um, it is a cool looking machine. It is very well built. Um, like it's two. I, I, I think it's two Core ZX. Gantries, it's Core ZX. Like is it still the, the portal printer or something? Dual gantry yeah. portal printer because he he originally did the CR 10 S5 as a portal printer where the bed was stationary and he just moved the entire gantry back and forth like it's doing right here. Yeah, I guess is that the draw? Um, I mean, it prints, he doesn't have a layer fan on there. I wonder how many of these video clips are of him actually, like, this is the first time it's printing. Like, oh my god, it's working. Like, I I'd like to see the outtakes from this. Um, but it's it's printing. So, it's pretty cool. So, if you guys want to check that out, 
Yeah, um, is that a paint roller? roller? Yes, that's his. That's his uh, awesome spool holder there. It's a paint roller there. Uh, but yeah, check it out. It's definitely interesting. I don't know how practical it is, um, but he's not practical printing. That's not his channel name. Um, but it is pretty cool. It looks nice. Um, I enjoyed oh, watching it. Like, it's one of those things, like, I enjoyed watching and I'm sitting here going, like, wait, what practical application, like, what what benefit could this be? So, maybe he pro I would assume he probably has other things planned for this, like, other videos that will utilize the dual... Well, yeah, this has been a huge iterative process over the past yeah. few years now. So, that was March 28th. Hang on. Yeah, he, what, eight months ago was his other video? Yeah, so I was going to check hey, when his last or four months ago. Yeah, so there's so there's a um this was the lead up to that though. There's multiple that go up to it. Because like yeah. the uh light he has, that's using the same gantry or the same gantry Yes, I did I did see this. This was cool. It, like it's got like uh tension, there's like tension and stuff in there, and then the rods. Am I thinking of, is this the one with the strings and stuff? Or am I thinking of something else? No, this has yeah. like the, the rods and strings and stuff in it. Um, mm -hmm. He's got a lot of cool videos. I usually put his videos on when I'm like uh, doing other stuff. Uh, yeah, I remember this one because I remember watching this. So he's putting sand in the infill. And all I can think of is if that gets in all the bearings and stuff on that machine. Uh, it's going to be, well, look how much is off on the side. It's going to I know. Well, it's open. Uh, I know. Most of the plastic is yeah. closed now. But yeah, check his channel if you guys haven't. It's proper printing on YouTube. He does the the man has tons of free time apparently. <laughs> um what else? Uh we have a couple other things. So we I mean we talked about there there are a bunch of multicolored printers coming out right now. So we talked about the K2, the Creality K2, the Frozen Arco, and then the Anycubic Ace. So Keep an eye out on all these machines. My opinion is if stuff is in Kickstarter, um, I would not recommend doing it because you could mm -hmm. lose your money and typically you might end up being the guinea pig for these companies. So um, comment your big... Especially if they're established companies. Like, come on. Like, you guys don't need the backing to start a new line of printers. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the dogs are being a pain in the ass. They're they're both over on the bed now. There's there's another bed right here, but we're gonna go on the same bed for some reason. Um, okay, so that wraps up all our news and rants. Um, let's see Q and A. What do we have for Q and A submissions here? I'm viewing the results. Um, let's see. Uh, Steven says, do you have a video playlist on how to set up input shaving on the EasyBoard V2 and what parts are required? Uh, it would just be the our standard input shaping video. There's not one specific for the EasyBoard. Um, I don't know if this is like an older... Yeah, it's uh, all like, really universal for... Input yeah, it's, it's universal. So um, we have a guide here, so I'm going to post that in the... Uh, post that in the chat there. There's our calculator... Um, there's a link to the, the full help center guide on the calculator page, but I also put the guide there. But there is a video on our help center page that I put together, and it works for any Marlin or Unified 2 machine, um, any version of Unified 2 that supports input shaping. Um, we have all the details here. Uh, this is one of the pages that those assholes over at Printer Mods. You want to print must. fast? Um, so there's a full guide here on how to do it. I used a silk filament to really show you guys the differences and then i had the i had the uh the benchy side by side here at some point they're there to show you guys the difference between the two so this was done on the uh soval svo6 plus was the plus of the regular oh no it was on my ender why did i think it was on the soval i believe i did mine on my mercury one with the easy yeah board. so that's what the pictures are all from yeah, so basically you 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 don't need to do anything special because you have an easy board. It's running Unified 2. Uh, so any guides for like Marlin, um, I would just recommend looking at our stuff. Our stuff, I know it works. Um, would, definitely, uh, would definitely recommend that. As long as you're that. updated to a recent version, you should be good yeah, to go. Yeah, so 
The next question is, David's asking, what is the recommended attempt for PLA Plus? He's got a P1S with our hardened steel nozzle. It would be whatever you were printing with the original nozzle. The temperatures are going to be the same um, because the stock nozzle and the P1, those are steel, right? Correct? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yes. I don't think they have brass at all. Um, yeah, so that they'll be uh, they'll be about the same, like because hardened steel and steel... I think hard steel has a little oh, yeah, less thermal steel. transfer properties, properties than the regular steel, uh, but it's not much. Um, and the other thing, it really depends on what brand of film you're printing. And just so everybody knows, if you guys see PLA Plus, there's no actual material called PLA Plus. It's marketing wink. Um, that's that's what it is. It's not actually, there's no pellets called PLA Plus pellets. And you know, basically, you know, like the thing is we could technically call all of our filament PLA plus because we do use high quality resins in our filaments. Um, we're not using Chinese made PLA in our PLA. We are using U.S. made PLA. It is extruded in China, but they're using U.S. PLA pellets. Um, but in general, for a hardened steel nozzle um, for PLA, I would start out around 230 and go up from there. Um, it also depends on how fast you're printing. If you're printing it faster, you need hotter temps. Um, it's there's there's no magic answer. I would I would say those start around two thirty and move up from there. Um, and if you're having issues, then you're gonna have to tune the printer. Like you know, they're in general the the t the hot ends we have for the bamboos, you can swap them out and not have to change any slicer settings. So that was the goal. Um, all right, the next one. Um, oh, I see Scott, Scott. Oh, sure. Answer my question in the ranting part of the show. No, there's a news part. Uh, he was asking about the thoughts about the KM, the K2 with the, the CMS adapter. Um, I, I think keep an eye on it. It looks promising. I'd want to see some preliminary tests. Um, that will be a machine we probably will be purchasing um, as well as the SVO8. So once those start coming available, um, we'll probably get our hands on, on both of those. We're definitely getting our hands on the SVO8. So. Yeah, I'm um, I'm gonna be grabbing it as soon as it comes out. We are we are at the point where I'm probably gonna start selling off some of our older machines that still work. So if anybody's in the Northwest Indiana or Chicagoland area and you guys are looking to pick up some printers for cheap, let me know because in the about about a month and a half, two months, I'm gonna start rotating out the older machines for some of the new ones we've been buying. I forgot um, who said it, but people were saying bring printers to Rocky Mountain because it's essentially Part of it's just a swap a, meet, yeah. A swap meet. Yeah. I don't have any ready to go, and I'd want to sell fully working machines. We have some that I just need to test, and then we'll probably get rid of. Um, but yeah, uh, Nidra says, "What's the best 500 by 500 printer on the market for tuning uh, to a print farm with high flow nozzles?" I think, I think you're basically going to be limited to the T500 from Comdro, which we have one. We just uh, I got it. It was uh, the hot end was broken. Um, because of the previous owner, not because of the, uh, the machine being bad. Um, basically you're, you're going to be limited to the T 500. And I don't even know if Creality makes the S five anymore. Those were like, those are the only two 500 by fiber machines I'm aware of, uh, unless you're yeah, those are the only custom building I something. Care. Um, and the T 500 does run clipper. Um, I have not used the machine yet. We had to repair it. And then we have all the stuff going on with, we had a ton of inventory come in. Now we got the rep rep festival coming up. So I haven't had time to play with it. Uh, but I think if you're buying new, the T 500 would be what I would go for. I have it. I've played with it. We, you know, after we've been working on it, um, it seems like it's a very well built machine. Um, I don't know. Oh, Creality I, does. Have I don't them. know any of any other options for a 500 by 500. Um, this one's from Bruno. Yeah. He's asking about the JBD linear bearings or graphite impregnated brass sleeves and a metal housing on his SVO six plus. I would not mess with them. So I, but this is going back to the ANET days because they're the same, uh, the same design with the linear rods. I found that cause I, th there was a big, uh, trend putting IGUS on everything. Um, I found it caused more problems than just using good quality bearings. Um, I would not mess with them. Get, get Just get good quality bearings, pack them with grease, um, and run those. Um, he said, any idea how to reflash? And he's got a multi-part, three questions. Any idea how to reflash the SEO 6 Plus when you disabled SD card in Marlon last build? We did not disable SD card in Marlon last build. Um, sounds like your board might have an issue. Um, or you're not formatting the card correctly. 
it's 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 probably a user issue. Yeah. But we do we not never disable the SD card. There's an option to disable the SD cards on 8-bit boards, but we do not auto disable SD cards. So if it's not working, it's either you did something wrong putting the firmware on the card or your board has a problem. Um, let's see here. Um, he said, I went to, I'm assuming I meant buy, uh, buy your P new PI Pro Play. I want to confirm if I should grab the K1 version because of the notches or go the slightly big one without the notches. Um, I haven't checked to see if my, if I think the K1 plate, the K1 Max plate will fit the SVO6 Plus. I actually need to check that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself a note uh, to check that. Uh, probably not tomorrow, but Monday. I don't know if Solval put the notch in the same place. I'm running one of our plates, though. I think I'm running the th either the 310 by 310 or 310 by 320. Um, either one of those is going to cover the build area. The 310 by 310, the 320 by 320, or 310 by 320, or the 310 by 315 K1 Max. They're all going to get the job done. Um, it's just how perfectly it's going to cosmetically look on the bed. Uh, but I'm going to make a note here. Test K1 Max plate on SV06 Plus. Um, but I have one of our older ones that I had. Um, and I think I have a 310 by 320. And it, it fits great. It works great. Their stock magnet's pretty good. So, um, yeah. All right. Let's see. Dog is asking, when switching from a 0.4 to 0.6 nozzle, is it necessary to recalibrate flow and pressure advance? I would say yes. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, because you're messing with that. Um, I would recalibrate just to be on the safe side. Um, Mark Kablunde is, uh, on the, is asking, on the Easy Plug Plus, is there a way to change its name? Um, yes, you can actually go in. Let me, I've, right. only like, I've only got like 60 of them on my network, so I don't know if I'll be able to find one. Um, Hang on, let me pull up their interface. You can do it in a couple of different places. And I have actually changed mine. Hey, Google, stop listening to me. It's like started listening to me for some fucking... Stop! Jesus. Damn creepy ass assistant things. Um, all right, here. So I have I have uh, one of my plugs up here now. You can see here I have renamed this Bonfire Lights. Um, you can see this is this is the module name. So this doesn't change, but you can rename it. So if you go to configuration and then configure other, you can rename the device name. Now on Tasmoda devices with multiple relay outputs, you'll have like friendly name one, two, three, four, whatever. But uh, typically, like I'll just name both of these. I'll change the device name and the friendly name to the same thing. So, like, if I put a two here, and it'll it'll reboot in a sec. It should show Bonfire Lights 2. There you go. And then if I go back to configuration here, configure other. That's what I do. Um, it's it's super simple. Hopefully I didn't screw up uh, piss home assistant off when I did it. Did I piss home assistant off? Let's find out. Did I, did I piss it off here? Oh, I don't know if I have a camera that can see there. Oh, yeah, I do. Yep, yep, they're, they're, they're working just fine. Um, but, yeah. All right, next question is from Lost Inc. He said, is it a bad idea to take the cable chain off my Creality K1? Um, hmm. I would try to have Wait. something to replace it. If you do. So I was looking at mine thinking about it because it is kind of I feel like it's they could have put a couple extra links in there. Um as long as the hot end cable is secured, you could secure it to the PTFE tube. I don't see a problem with that as long as it's not whacking it around. Um I'm running mine still with the, the stock cable chain setup. Um the main thing is you want to make sure that the cable is not flopping around because otherwise you're going to damage it. That's the big thing. If that makes sense. So. Yeah, it needs to be supported in some way. If you yeah, it has to be supported. Typically, though, since it does have that reverse Bowden tube, um, that, would, that would be the way I would secure it. I've secured wires to the PTFE tubes on many, many builds. So. That's just what I do typically. 
So, um, let's see here. All right. I don't have anything else. There's no more questions here. I just, I just, uh, I was waiting for the page to refresh, so I kind of like had a brain fart there. Uh, but we are at an hour, so yeah. Um, let's see here. Yep, no more questions. So um, have a have an easy easy stream. It's been a long ass week. I've been you know fighting with Trust Pilot, and then you know Grant 3D Musk Criteria's over there was uh, you know trying to fuck with us over a meme. And then uh, had a bunch of bullshit with OnePlus, which is why I, I now have a Pixel. <laughs> um, it's been it's been a pain in the ass of the week. I'm I am ready to I am I'm ready to take a break. I'm probably gonna play some some Lethal Company or something tonight and have a glass of whiskey because <laughs> it's been a long ass week. Um, yeah. So, anyways, Tord, you got anything else to add before we wrap this uh, wrap this session up here? Uh. Support may be slightly delayed because oh, of yeah. Rocky Mountain as well as orders. Yeah, next week. So, of yeah, course. that's good. Uh, we totally forgot. We should have put that in the Also, notes. no stream have... next week. I mean, maybe. Maybe we could try maybe to win. I mean, we could, we could, I mean, we could both each pop in on our phone. That does work. Um, yeah. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, Oh yeah. So, but basically, we have we do have stuff. Uh, we do have stuff getting posted automatically, um, letting people know there will be closure notices posted. But basically, the plan is so I do have extra help. So uh, Matt is going to come in in the evenings and get orders packed. So basically, the order is going to be delayed by a day. So everything will come in during the day. It will get shipped out at night, picked up the next day. Um, and uh, I, I also have another guy too that might come in. So depending on the orders. Uh, We'll be able to get them out. It'll just be one day extra processing time uh, for to actually get them shipped out. And then, in terms of support tickets, torn, I'll be popping in on and off, um, you know, while we're at the show to get back to them. Uh, yeah, we're both bringing laptops and everything. yeah. And I always I have I have support. But, well, I got to put it back on here, but I had, I've I usually have support pal on my phone, and I'll pop that up and you know just keep an eye on things because you know unlike unlike other companies, we actually do check and try to get back to our customers in a reasonable amount of time. So, but all right. I think, I think I might actually take a nap today. Although I feel like that if I like might be at, I might be at the point though, where if I take a nap, it's going to end up being like, I'm just going to go to sleep. Nap until tomorrow. <laughs> Don't you, damn it. Fuck you, Tor. You did all Why the did you do that? Oh my God. Oh, okay. Do we have any treats down here for the dog? Oh, they're like, I don't know. Wow. Mom gypped them. There's nothing in here. She's got to have treats somewhere. Down here. Playing around with my S4. Get some big print stuff. Little Daredevil mask as well. A little bit of banding there. Need to re lubricate the rods. Thanks, Tor. My cats don't like the new treats that I got them, so they're not going to come for them. I got, I got peanuts. I want some dry roasted peanuts. You want? Some, let's see if we can. Do you want some peanuts? Do you, you want some peanuts? Sure. My cats are passed out on my bed. Peanuts? Good boy. Remo's like, what is this? Coddle eat them. Nope. No? They like peanut butter. You'd think they'd like peanuts. Uh, Lost. I have a... <laughs> uh, what's it called? Not the Galileo. It's, a... it's whatever the uh, stock uh, stealth burner. The older stealth burner had. Okay, we, we've we've discovered that these are edible. He's like, <laughs> yes, sir. Clockwork too. There we go. I think like it's my patch mask. I think I need to relive the rods. 
loss. See how good that he is. That printer is seven years old. <laughs> All right, comet here. Comet. This one. This is a modified uh, Mercury one that I built an enclosure for. There we go. He, they're getting. They're getting potato chips. I did see a bag of potato chips. They like the peanuts, though. I was gonna say there's, like, there's no reason they shouldn't like peanuts. They love peanut butter. I like uh, 3D experience. I I do like the Dragon Burner. I have it on my uh, V zero. The Dragon the Burner. The Dragon Burner. Mer. All right, dogs got some treats, even though it was just peanuts. But they like peanuts. Okay, I will have to. I will have to make a note to restock the basement treats. So, oh, yes, I do one thing. The, uh, I want to give a yeah, shout out to Jim that. for showing me these. I have a bunch of these now. These are those like IKEA. Those are like those IKEA. They're like storage things, and like the perfect filament. For they're perfect for filament. And they're only like seven or eight bucks, I think. And they got wheels. Well, on, so you can like move them in and out. Um, send me what that is because I'm, I have I a couple to, extra ones. Uh, I think it's like the Versabacken. The Versabacken. Uh, go to San Francisco for my flight. I'm not going to be too far from Anankia. I got to find, I I gotta find what. Hang on. I told my brother Doug what they are because he picked them up for me. Um. Hang on, I'm trying to find it. Hang on, I'm just gonna search in our our chat uh, history. Phoenix, IKEA. This one has the the black PTFE line. The, I was coded. close. I said there was a Verk second. It's the it's the Veskin. The Veskin. Right. <laughs> I was close. I was close. The Veskin. No, we can't. There you go. No, we're just having like two separate like conversations going on at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm responding so. to chat. He's responding to me. <laughs> all right well yeah there we go i have like three more of them not assembled sitting over there but i got them for down here because krista had like piles of filament over there um and she has a rack over there that's got a ton of stuff yet yeah. and the, the nice thing is they have wheels they they slide this way they don't slide this way they only slide this way so the you could like i saw jim he had them under so a standing go desk from up here right off into the tank perfect <laughs> yeah so, but yeah, for, uh, sorry, they're $10, the, the best skin. So, uh, I like them. They hold the Chris is like, they don't hold that many spools of filament. You can fit like seven, to eight rolls on each shelf. That's a decent amount of filament. So <clears throat> I'm, I think that's fine for $10. It works and I can move it around and get it out of the way. And then my filament's there. I don't know where Jim got it from, but. I saw it at Jim's house. He got a bunch for his wife for underneath her uh, standing desk that her bamboo printers were on. So, all right. Nice. Now I'm actually going to wrap this up and uh, wrap up this Midwest goodbye here. So, <laughs> once a healthy food. limit of rolls of filament, I'd, I'd say under 100, you're fine. You know, anything have, after that, unless I'm you're reselling or running a print farm, it gets a little, you know, come on. You never know when you're going to need. Um, you never know when you're going to need a, uh, a you know random color that you've only printed like one thing with. And then when you get rid of it or you don't have it, you're going to need it. So, all right. I will talk to you guys later. And remember, if you guys want to get a little deal, uh, since I've had a really bad week, I made a little discount code called It's Bad, and you get 6.9% off on anything in the TH3D store. So make sure you guys use that. Uh, that code, I think, is valid for a week. I know it's at least a week. I might have made it longer. but you can just put it's bad in the checkout and you can get 6.9% off. Nice.